Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to return to another brewery who I haven't reviewed anything from in quite a little while. I think it was about two years ago that I last reviewed a beer from these guys. But they are a brewery who carry a very good reputation and quite rightly so based on my previous experiences. So for this one we're going to go to Kanagawa Prefecture just to the south of Tokyo known for Yokohama City and we're having a taste of another Another beer from St Gallen Brewery and I think this is review number five or so that I've done on the channel from these guys. This one is the Fresh Hop IPA which comes in at 6.5% ABV, one of their autumn seasonal beers and this one is brewed using a local hop variety from Yamanashi Prefecture just out to the west of Tokyo. So really interested to see how this one turns out, always interesting to try new hops from different places and hopefully it's another good beer and knowing this brewery it probably will be. Big thank you once again to Koji at Liquor Shop Asahiya in Taishibashi Yamaichi here in Osaka. As I've said in many of these Japanese beer videos, he is my Japanese beer dealer, so I'll put the link to his Facebook page in the description below. And if you go to the shop, you'll meet him or his daughter Rika, who are always willing to give you some really interesting advice on Japanese craft beers. But as I say, an interesting beer this one, a very well respected Japanese craft brewery as well, and definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. So um, yeah, as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from St Gallen Brewery before no doubt I'll add some more at some point in the near future I don't intend to leave another two years before I review my next one there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to or being added to whenever I get the chance, I should say. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about St. Gallen Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So St. Gallen Brewery are based in Atsugi in Kanagawa Prefecture to the south of Tokyo, as I mentioned earlier, known for Yokohama City, and it's owned by Nobuhisa Iwamoto. So his father, Matsuo, had been in the US up until around 1989, and this was where he discovered craft beer, and he also later experimented uh, uh, with some home brewing and things like that. But remember, home brewing was illegal in Japan for quite some time, but I believe it was America he was doing these experiments in. But Matsuo owned a, an alcohol store, and he wanted to be able to start his own brew pub in Japan, but prior to 1994, the tax laws were such that only breweries producing more than 2 million litres of beer per year could exist. But in 1992, Matsuo returned to the US and applied for a brewing licence, and this was granted later on in 1993. Simultaneously, Nobuhisa opened a brew pub in Roppongi in Tokyo, and there he was brewing non-alcoholic beer, which wasn't actually prohibited under the tax laws in Japan. So the beer that Matsuo was making in the US was also imported into Japan and served in the brew pub and their main reason for this was that they wanted to show people how beer could actually be made but they also wanted to have the real deal American craft beers available as well so kind of an interesting way of doing it brewing their beers in America importing them into Amer into Japan and also producing their own non-alcoholic beer on site but they closed the brew pub in 1997 and then opened their own brewery in Atsugi after Matsuo returned to Japan in the early days the brewery really struggled though as did many of these local Local, these little Jibiru breweries or local beer breweries as they were calling them in Japan and um, they stopped brewing for a period I believe it was from 2001 to 2003 but Nobuhisa you know really carried on and persevered and in 2005 he was able to take on some extra staff at the brewery so Nobuhisa attributes much of the brewery's current success to Miki Nakagawa who is his managing director or marketing director and he and you know they've really pushed the uh, the brewery's bottle sales and things like that and they've enjoyed a steady growth over the last kind of 10 15 years now but apparently the brewery was named St Gallen after the the abbey in Switzerland which was the first place in the world to have an official brewing license and this brewery is of course one of the first that was established in Japan i think it's um, Ichigo who are officially the first in terms of having a brewing license but obviously these guys were brewing non-alcoholic beer in Japan before Ichigo officially 
actually existed. So, you know, two sides to the coin, I guess you could say. But this brewery are also well known for a particular beer. They're known for their stouts generally, but there's one stout in particular that is really quite interesting. It's called the Unko no Kuro, which basically means like black shit, I think, basically. And this particular beer was made using coffee beans that were taken out of elephant dung. And the label actually showed the whole process of this beer being made, which was kind of quite funny, actually, if you look at it. The label picture is on the website and you can find this beer on Untapped and things like that. I'll try and remember and put a link to the Untapped profile for this beer in the description below. But as of December 2019, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced 115 different types of beer according to Untapped and they've won a number of awards for their beers, particularly for their stouts, actually. They've got their... Um, their what do you call it the the Valentine Day uh, Valentine's Day stout that they produce which is very nice they've got the El, the Unaniel and the El Diablo the barley wine and the wheat wine I need to review the Unaniel for you at some point and they've also done a chocolate orange stout which I think I've reviewed as well and that was a really um quite nice beer as well from what I remember they've also got a very nice orange um ale as well which is great um, but lots of very interesting beers from this brewery when it comes to St Gallen you're always going to get something quite interesting in my experience but probably their best selling beer is the Yokohama XPA or something it's called so that one is definitely worth checking out if you get the chance and I need to make sure that I do a review for that one at some point soon I've been meaning to try that beer for quite a little while but that's all you really need to know about St Gallen Brewery for the moment if you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the rate beer and untapped pages for information on all the different beers they do have a very good website Website, but it's in Japanese so for those of you who are English speakers you might want to use the untapped and, uh, and rate beer resources there to, to find out more about this brewery but you can also use Google Chrome and use Google Translate which works pretty well actually so um, yeah let's get a taste of this beer then and see how we get on so this one as I mentioned to you at the start of the video this one is a 6.5% IPA and the hops that they use in this one come from Yamanashi Prefecture from the Asakawa farm who they've been tubbing, they've been taking Taking hops from or buying hops from I should say since around 2009 so really quite interesting so the beer uses a special local variety which is called Kai Kogane and uh, the Asakawa farm I believe is in a city called Kai um, and that's where it takes its name from it's supposed to be a really quite citrusy hop but I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll see that when we actually taste the beer but that was all the in that information all came from the website they've got a huge big blog that talks about the cultivation of the hops and stuff like that um, and they use a few I think they say oh, there's another hop in there that they have called Hokuto or something like that. There's a few different varieties of hops available from the uh, the Asakawa farm and hopefully there's more of these. I mean, Soriachi Ace was always the um, the Japanese hop that was very well known and I think that's grown over on the west coast of America now. So hopefully we start to see more Japanese hop varieties over the while. So keep an eye out on the Asakawa farm and I'll see if I can get a link to their website at some uh, in the video description below as well. So um. Yeah, this should be really interesting. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. There you can see quite a nice modern and fresh label. Of course, there's quite a few breweries doing these fresh hop IPAs and things like that. Notably, um, Sierra Nevada, who have a Northern Hemisphere and a Southern Hemisphere one, brewed obviously with American and uh, New Zealand and Australian hops generally. But um, yeah, it's cool to find one of these types of beers in Japan. There's also one of my local breweries in Sweden are doing this uh, this sort of thing as well, which is pretty cool. But there you can see, there is the Sankt Gallen bottle cap on this one. As I mentioned earlier, a 6.5% IPA. So without further ado, <clears throat> let's get it open and we'll get on with the tasting then. Yeah, curious to see how this one turns out. Yeah, a little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get this guy out and into the glass. As I mentioned in the video as well, this one is a, an autumn seasonal beer. And I think it was I think it was released at the end of November, so I'm drinking this roughly when it's about a month old. So it's, you know, usually you want to drink these within about 2 weeks, but, you know, can't uh, with the Japanese beers, you know, I have to wait a little bit to actually get a hold of these. But um yeah, look at this. So as you can see with this beer, if I hold this one up to the light, it's got a few little bits of sediment and stuff floating around, but that's just because it's been 
on Koji's fridge in uh, the beer shop and then in my fridge here at Michiko, well, Michiko's mum and dad's fridge I should say, at the apartment but it looks really really very nice this one it's a lovely kind of rich goldeny amber colour it looks kind of like a west coast IPA this one actually it's not the haziest of IPAs you're going to come across you can see a few little bits of sediment just floating around in this one if I put my fingers behind the glass there is a degree of haze to this beer um, but it's nowhere near as hazy as the likes of a New England IPA or anything like that. A lovely solid one finger frothy cream coloured head on this one. It looks pretty much as you would expect from an IPA. So um, yeah, nothing overly surprising about the appearance of this beer. Let's take a look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. Oh, that comes across really nicely actually. Kaikogane hops. You know, it's interesting. It really comes across in the aroma as very similar to... It's a little bit like Centennial, but it's also got a little bit of the kind of juicier stuff you would expect from like Citra or Mosaic or something like that. It's, it really is a very citrusy hop, this one. Um, it's not overly tropical, but it's it's just got a little bit of that kind of, that kind of note to it. So definitely some nice zesty sort of um, lemony notes, a little bit of a kind of orangey quality, but maybe it's more of a juicy sort of tangerine note, but there's a little bit of like a papaya -y, mango type quality to this beer as well. So yeah, it's almost, it is, it does almost come across as like um, a bit of a, a cross between like Citra, Mosaic and Centennial. There's little elements of all three of those hops in here. It did say on the little blog that this hop had been compared to, um, you know, to you know, these big western, or western hops as they called it, I mean, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I like how that, uh, how that goes together. This is, it's a lovely smelling hop, I have to say. It comes across very, very nicely. The juicy, fruity notes in this beer are very, very good. It's almost got a little bit of a cascade type quality to it as well. The way the grassiness and stuff comes across in this beer. Um, and it has a little bit of an almost grapefruity note, just like a juicy grapefruity note in the background. It does there is an element of cascade to that um to that beer. I mean the in terms of the actual fruits that are coming out, I think it's fair to say that that is like sort of citra centennial uh, mosaic in some ways. But the the way in which it comes out is a little bit more like cascade. It didn't say how many uh, what percentage alpha acid there was in this, and um, but I would guess this one's maybe around the 10. I don't think it's the highest. I mean, you can get some of them like 15, 16 percent, but just going by the, the aroma from this one, I suspect that it might be, you know, somewhere in the region of like a sort of 10 percent ish alpha acid hop. You can sometimes just tell because of how big the floral qualities and stuff are. Um, so I would, I think it's yeah, somewhere between like. I think Cascade is normally 8, so let's just say it's around, I suspect the alpha acid is around 8 to 10% in this one. And that's what usually gives you your bittering, um, of course, in this one. It gives you the big floral elements. But yeah, the juicy fruity notes in that are very, very interesting. It does have a little bit of that juicy grapefruity quality. And like I said, some lemony notes, a little bit of mango, and a little bit of like papaya, and some sort of tangerine notes, something like that. That's a really interesting one. I always love discovering new hops, and this time when I've come to Japan, I've discovered quite a few. Some of them American, you know, the Eight Reindeers beer that I reviewed from Isakaduya. That had some new hops in it that I'd never seen before. I love that. It's really cool. The Japanese seem to find things that um, either people have long forgotten about or you've just never heard of. They're quite innovative that way, I have to say. Um, but yeah, in terms of the, the green side of the hops then, it's definitely got a quite a nice smooth floral quality to it. There's some lovely grassy notes coming out of this beer as well. But I found, I remember trying the fresh hop IPAs from Sierra Nevada and they come across as smelling a little bit wetter and you do get that impression out of this beer. That's why the, the grassiness and the floral qualities come come out come across as being just that little bit wetter, if you like. There's a teeny little bit of earthiness, but not overly much, I would say. Um, in terms of the malt base, it's definitely quite biscuity. There's maybe a little bit of a sweeter caramel in there. It's almost a little bit like butterscotchy. It comes across as maybe just a little touch diacetyl or something like that. Um, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of an almost butterscotchy Werther's Original type aroma in there. Um, so yeah, some 
yeah, some biscuity notes, a little bit of breadiness in there, some uh, sweeter caramel, butterscotchy type notes. Could it be American Turo that they're using for this? I don't know. I don't know how common it is to actually use Japanese malts in craft beer because obviously the Japanese have their own whiskey industry and things like that which is very good by the way but I don't know how much of their own malt they actually produce I think a lot of the stuff is um, imported because you know Japan there's only about 30% of the land I think is usable uh, most of it's mountainous to be honest so a lot Japan historically has been very dependent on imports um, so I guess most of the malt that they'll use will either be American or European of some description. But yeah, a lovely smelling beer this one. It comes across in the aroma as being a little bit more akin to like a West Coast IPA. It didn't say specifically what type of IPA this one was on the website or anything. It just said IPA. But a lovely smelling beer this one. Quite unique I have to say. Um, so take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this now and see how we get on. This one is the Fresh Hot IPA from St. Gallen Brewery in Atsugi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in Kanagawa Prefecture, just to the south of Tokyo, using Kaikogane hops from, uh, from Yamanashi Prefecture, which is out to the west of Tokyo. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, Kampai. Oh yeah. That's, it's really nice that actually, um, this is one of these beers that it kind of strikes you as being a little bit old school, you know, it really reminds me of like, for example, the Joker IPA from, um, from Williams Brothers at home in Scotland or, you know, like Sierra Nevada Paleo, something like that. This is one of these beers that is quite, it's just old school in the way it comes across and, um, you know, I do wonder... Because um, Raymond of Gord's Brewery in Sweden, one of my local breweries in Sweden, they do their fresh hop, the Swedish hop IPA or the Skånskop IPA they call it. And um, it's really, it, it has the same kind of feel to it. Um, it's really, it's really interesting. I think the whole idea behind this is to have, you know, like a sort of old school IPA and just showcase the flavours of the hops. And it does that really nicely. Having a malt base like this one really really does that very well. This is a, a really nice drinkable IPA actually. So thumbs up to St. Gallen once again. I picked this one because it seemed like a very interesting one to try and um, it's it definitely is. It's been this is this is a one that pardon me is a little bit different than all the other things you're going to find in Japan. Yeah solid solid beer um let's try and break this one down then we'll start with the malt base and then we'll focus on the hops afterwards um so straight away in the middle of your palate you get a lovely little bit of a kind of white um bready quality that blankets the middle of the tongue very quickly that sweetens up though and you start to get a kind of sweet caramel in the middle of your palate there's definitely a little bit of a kind of biscuity quality and some of those almost Werther's original butterscotchy type flavours, those are sitting in the middle of the palate as well, which is, is really quite nice. Um, there's not really any kind of, there's maybe a teeny little bit of a slightly woody undertone to this one, um, but it's very, very minimal to be honest. It's quite a straight up kind of caramelly, biscuity and bready malt base. It's actually quite a, a straight up West Coast IPA malt base. This one to me is definitely like a sort of West Coast um, IPA. I wouldn't be surprised if this is using, you know, the likes of US05 yeast or something like that. There is something distinctly old school about this beer. That, you know, it could also be like Safal or something like that. Um, it's it's interesting that. I like that. There's, there really is, the way that the malty qualities and the yeasty qualities come across in this one, There is it's very kind of old school, this, but I really like it, actually. It also reminds me of the Hailey Pan from um, Hailey Brewery. In, uh, in Malmö in Sweden, it's a really, there's something about this beer really reminds me of that. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised actually if they're using like American two-row malts in this. I really wouldn't be surprised for that. It's, it's a bit, the American malts, the way the smoothness comes out in American malts is quite different from the, uh, from the German ones actually. I always find American malt to just be that little bit sweeter. Than European malt, to be honest with you, but um, 
yeah, I like that about this beer. On to the hops anyway. So, the back corners of the palate, there's definitely a little bit of earthiness there. But as you move further forward along the sides of the tongue, there is a little, little touch of a herbal quality there. But as you reach the front corners of the palate, it's quite floral and aromatic. There's a little bit of spiciness in there as well. But then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's uh, a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in my mind. The way the grassiness comes across at the front of the palate is almost a bit noble-like. It's very light and quite bright, but the floral qualities are a little bit more kind of spicy, like uh, American hops. And the way that the, the fruitiness comes out in this beer as well is really quite similar to, um, to Cascade, but it's got a few different flavours in there actually. So the, the vibe that you get from this hop is quite like Cascade, but the actual flavours um, are a little bit different, I would say. Yeah, it's really nice this. So, as I always say, the fruity characteristics of a beer, they'll come out in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of the tongue. And for me, if you just go to the back of that oily part of your tongue, you'll get a little bit of that darker grapefruit in there. And as you move further forward, it gradually makes the transition to being a little bit more kind of, um, there's a little bit of an orangey quality to this one. The sort of mangoey and papaya qualities. There's a little bit of the papaya. I don't really get the mango out of this one. There is a wee bit of a kind of papaya tropical quality to this beer, but mainly it's kind of grapefruity. And the grapefruit is quite light, by the way. It's not dominating the fruity side of the beer. But as you come further forward from it, it gets a little bit more orangey, sort of, it's not quite, it's maybe more of a juicy tangerine rather than orange right enough, but then the further you go into the aftertaste, it does almost have a little bit of a slightly figgy type flavour to it, which is quite interesting. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, the way that the fruitiness comes out in this beer is really quite nice. I do suspect, as I mentioned earlier, that this hop is probably around, you know, somewhere between 8 and 10% alpha acid. I think it's roughly around that. Um, I could be wrong, and correct me if I am wrong, um, but this one, um, it really has a sort of Cascade vibe to it. It really feels a lot like Cascade. It's just the flavour is, um, is slightly different. It comes across as a very old school IPA, this, but I think it works really pretty nicely to be honest. This one gets a thumbs up from me and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. It's a very, I think the idea behind this beer is to be quite straight up and showcase the flavours of the hops and it does it really quite nicely actually. I would love to try this um, as a sort of New England hazy style IPA as well. I think that would be an interesting experience if they released two different fresh hop IPAs. Um, you know, New England and uh, and West Coast, that could be an interesting experiment. But as a standalone beer, it's really nice and it's definitely cool to try some Japanese hop varieties as well. I know that um, Shiga Kogan beer also have the, is it the Shinzu Wazi it's called, and they use that in a lot of their beers too. Um, so you can get, there are quite a few different varieties of Japanese hops these days, but they haven't been commercialised in, uh, in quite the same way. I think Uchu Brewing are also producing some of their own hop varieties these days as well, because the owners of that brewery are farmers by trade. So um, yeah, really, really interesting beer this one. I love when you think, when you find things like this from different countries. So um, yeah, big thumbs up to St. Gallen for this one. Very Cascade-like, a very sort of old school West Coast IPA, this one generally in terms of its flavour um, flavor profile. So in terms of the mouthfeel then, um, I would say mid-bodied beer, carbonation is really smooth. Um, nice, uh, it's kind of an oily mouthfeel this one, to be honest with you. It's got a bit of wetness to it, but I'd say mainly an oily mouthfeel. In terms of bitterness and IBUs, I think it must be around 60-ish. I think around 60 IBUs is a good estimate for this one. Um, the malt base is really smooth. Nice degree of sweetness to it as well. You pick out the sweetness in the middle of your palate. The further you go into the aftertaste, it dries out a little bit. You do get a bit of dryness on the side of the tongue later on, but the sweetness remains there in the middle of the palate. And you've got a lovely, quite oily um, fruity quality to this beer as well. So really just a very, very solid West Coast IPA. A little bit old school, but it really highlights this... Um, 
Kaigo Kuni hop, if I'm remembering the name correctly, from uh, from the Asakawa farm, which is, is really quite nice. So, you know, thumbs up to St. Gallen for this beer. I think they've pulled off one that is really very, very nice. And it's cool to see there are local hop farmers here in Japan, and hopefully they become a little bit more sort of uh, commercialised, I guess you could say, in Japanese hops spread across the world a little bit. Always cool to try different hops from different places, of course. So, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. A nice old school IPA, this one. So, yeah, well done to St. Gallen for this beer. I'll definitely need to review a few more from these guys at some point soon. So, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from St. Gallen Brewery as well. We will definitely return to these guys at some point fairly soon. A brewery that I really uh, very much appreciate uh, and I just need to, you know, I just wish I could come across them a little bit more easily. But um, try this beer next year if you get the chance and uh, make sure you support your local Japanese craft breweries if you have them. So, yeah, thank you again for watching. Make sure you check out St. Gallen. These guys are probably one of the kind of easier, uh, more readily available Japanese craft breweries as well. And uh, they've got some very interesting beers, particularly at the darker end of the spectrum. But thank you again for watching. Make sure you check out my social media, check out the brewery website and things, and I'll catch you guys very soon. This one was the Fresh Hop IPA at 6.5% from St. Gallen Brewery in Atsugi, uh, Kanagawa Prefecture near Yokohama in here in Japan. Until the next time, slanja just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, Kampai.